Today's episode is all about painting in the trunk area. Stay tuned. Garage time. Okay, this should be just to kind of scuff and shoot. You know, previously I spent a lot of time prepping this area and getting the epoxy primer on it. I just want to get it, um, you know, in the Bahama yellow. I'm not going to be putting the undercoating on. Um, I don't think it's going to do a lot of good. Plus, I kind of want to show off some of the fabrication work that was done here, like the oil cooler and all the seam welds here on the sides. This whole trunk area has been scuffed up. I hit it with the 400 on a sanding block, and then I just got the hard to reach areas with the Scotch Brite pad. Um, it's kind of equivalent to 400, I think. And I did do a little bit of body work right here. I found a couple um, dents in this kind of highly visible area. So I did put some filler on that. I'm gonna hit that with some primer. I'm gonna be putting some seam sealer on some of the open seams. Um, there's not many, but there's like one right there, big one right there. So I also did a little bit of filler in this door jam area. There were some dents down there low, and then um, a little bit here on the bottom. And this is the area that um, we fixed last week. It's looking much better, getting a lot flatter. Still needs a little bit more attention, but I hope to hit this with some primer too, as I get some primer in the gun. I put the seam sealer on as light as I could, kind of smoothed it out with my finger, kind of made a mess, but uh, I used a little bit of paint thinner to, to help smooth it out. And I'm gonna let that dry, go take a break. When I come back, I'll shoot some epoxy primer on just the spots that need it, and then hopefully, color. So you saw I rigged up this uh, plastic directly over the car, only in the area that I'm gonna be painting. Uh, this is just to prevent dust from coming from the rafters. You know, this is almost impossible to clean up here, and that's where most of the dust is. So if it does fall, it's gonna hit the plastic. The plastic's a little bit electrostatic, so maybe things will cling to it, I don't know. It's just above my head, so I don't hope to bump into it. I'm hoping that'll keep some of the trash out of the paint. Of course, there's lots of dust in here. It's gonna come from the sides, but that's just my, uh, my only attempt to try to make this as good as possible. Here in the trunk area, I did spray a little bit of primer over the areas that were touched up with a little bit of the uh, finishing putty or a little bit of the filler. So this is pretty much ready to spray. I'm gonna go over it again with just a little bit of Scotch-Brite pad just for adhesion, and then it's time to uh, get this over with, spray some yellow.
Okay, it's been several hours now that the base coat's dried. This is only the base coat and things went pretty well. It took me about three coats to get good coverage. I mean, it's really difficult for me to spray in here. I don't really have the right gun. I need a smaller gun to get down inside some of these like recesses. But I think I got enough of base coat on here. I think it's pretty well covered. I did shine a really bright light, kind of looking for, for um, some thin areas, and I think I got them all covered. So really happy so far. You know, this is not perfectly sanded and finished, so there's gonna be some rough areas, like where there were some spot welded impact bumper brackets. But in general, it went really well. There's only one thing that happened to me if you, if you look really carefully, right here, when I was tilting the gun to spray underneath here in the underside, I was tilting it, and I had the gun a little bit you know, upside down, and it dripped um, some paint right here. So I don't know if you can tell, but there's a little spot where the paint just fell right out of the top of the gun and dripped onto this sort of highly visible area. So I was just gonna put the clear on regardless of the drip, but what happened was it got too cold in the garage and I just didn't want to shoot the clear. So I think what I'll do is I'll come back tomorrow and I will sand out, I'll wet sand out those little drips. I'll reshoot a little bit of base right here just in this local area. And then I'll shoot the clear tomorrow afternoon when it's warm enough. I also sprayed all the hinges and also the, uh, the smuggler's box door. So you can see here, this um, is painted on both sides. Painted that on both sides and that uh, it's coming out okay. The one thing that I didn't finish on this one, this one wasn't prepped very well. And right here next to this embossment, um, there's just a couple reactions with the old paint. This one came out really rough. So I stopped on this one. I'm going to be sanding this back down and prepping it better. And then I'll shoot the base coat next time I get base out. But uh, everything else, like these are the deck lid hinges. These came out much better. Um, so I got two deck lid hinges done and then I got one of the uh, front hood hinges done. So if you remember, this was uh, several weeks worth of work. I mean, there is the oil cooler duct, there's the new suspension pan, the gas tank cover was repaired in this corner area over here. The uh, impact bumpers are removed, the seams are welded, the brackets are added for the uh, strut brace, and everything's been cleaned up, undercoating removed. Also, I can have kind of a clean, smooth look here on the uh, the trunk area. I want to customize the gas tank in this to use a uh, internal fuel pump, so that's coming. Also guys, you can see I set up that box fan underneath the car. That sucked down some of the fumes. You can tell by the uh, color of the material there, it definitely took in some of the overspray. And then underneath that fan, I just coated the floor with these wet towels. So as I walk around, I'm not kicking up dust and anything that the fan blows kind of got trapped by these wet towels. Yeah, I also kind of, you know, took a rag and wiped down the floor a little bit. It's more than I've done in the past. And I gotta say that I don't think there's a lot of dust in this. So I'm pretty pleased with the uh, garage paint job here. And the overspray wasn't too bad this time. I did drop the air pressure a little bit on the spray gun and that seemed to really cut down the overspray. Also interesting is this plastic I put up above to catch dust also caught some of the overspray. It seems like it sort of sticks to it. It's like kind of static clean. So I'm not trying to uh, touch this. I'm gonna leave it here until I do the clear. I'm just using a little bit of 600. I got it taped onto this plexiglass block. This is real small, about an inch by inch, you know, piece of 600. And I'm going to be using the wax and grease remover instead of water to wet sand this uh, little drip area. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Um, these right here, these three things are spot welds and those are divots in the metal. That's not where the drips were. The drips were right here and I sanded them out and it looks, it looks pretty good. It's nice and flat. I did not sand all the way through to the sealer coat and it's tempting just to put some um, clear right over the top of this but they say in the instruction manual, you should shoot another coat of base before you shoot the clear. So that's what I'll do. I think it preserves the color and also the sheen when you put the new base coat on it.
Well guys, now it's yellow and shiny. I was definitely worried about getting enough paint down in this box and that it, uh, it came out okay. It's a little bit um, light in some areas, but in general, like it, it, it came out great. This is the area where that drip was and it's now gone. And it's been a couple hours. This looks like it's wet, but it's not, it's dry. So it's looking really good. This doesn't matter, but this is a spot where I hit with either, I think I hit this with the hose. So from this seal down, we'll get black. So these smudges really aren't gonna matter. So that's masking tape over the VIN number. I'm gonna pull that off. It's gonna have the black paint underneath there. This spot is unfortunate. Um, I had to move this when I was painting it so I can get in you know, all the areas. So when it was resting right there, there's a bare spot. Um, I might just touch that up with a Q-tip, who knows. So I thought if anything, I was gonna get a run inside here because it was really difficult to spray. Um, but I didn't get a run here, I got one on the side. Um, I just loaded this up just a little too much on top and it rolled on down. I'm trying to get this run on camera here. You see a couple little drips. Those runs, I think you can see them in the camera, those runs are in the clear. So the instructions say to come back the following day and cut it down with some 1200 or something and uh, just flatten them out. It should be okay, it doesn't look like they're bubbled or anything. So uh, you flatten that out and then you polish it. Unfortunately, I won't be here tomorrow. I am getting on a plane in a couple hours, which means I will be editing this video on the plane. It's already Friday at like uh, three o'clock. So it's gonna be a long day, but I'm really happy with how it came out. Okay, these hinges came out uh, really smooth as well. All but one. Here's the front hinge. Um, it looks really nice. A little smudge on that one. Um, another deck lid hinge. Also looks really nice. This is the one I didn't finish the base coat on, and, I, and I, when I ended up sanding it, I sanded it all the way through to metal. So this needs to go back in the primer stage. This is the only one that didn't make it through the process. You can see I still have more sanding to do. It just was a little bit rough, so I'm just gonna redo it again. And then I don't even know if I'm gonna use this smuggler's box cover. It's a little heavy, but it did come out nice. Thank you guys. I'll see you at the Alamo Bowl.